Hey girls, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Um, today we're going to be talking about gentle. Being gentle to yourself. Because you know we all created these visions. We all created plans. And now we're into the 17th of January. So we're two weeks into the year. And perhaps you haven't even tried to execute any of those plans. And then you find yourself going back and reviewing it and then beating yourself up. See, because what we do know is we are the hardest on ourselves than anybody is. That's just our nature. That's what we do. We have higher expectations of ourselves than most people do around us. So how and what do we do with this? Because being harsh on yourself can be very destructive. It can be a big impact when, when folks around you start seeing your emotions and your what it's causing, if that makes sense. So let's say, for example, I'm being harsh on myself, that I failed. Because I do have, and some of you have seen, you know, my vision board here. I like this. Uh, feed your brain more chocolate. Okay, but anyhow. But I have my whole vision for, oops, trying to make sure you're seeing it backwards. But, you know, the eating right and the doing right, moving. I've got a lot of my stuff here. My theme word for the year, strong mind, body, spirit. But one of the things on here that was a big, and it is part of my plan because it's one of my weakest spots, is the little tiny word and you're looking at it backwards, breakfast. Because see, one of the things I do have an issue with is making sure I eat. And I know some people say, what the heck, you don't eat? No, I don't. I just get busy. I get distracted. I don't eat if it's just me here. And that's not a good thing because I need that protein to keep me going. So what happens? I get into where I haven't had the protein and my body starts shutting down during the day. And then I get hard on myself. I start beating myself up because I didn't eat the breakfast. Instead of just saying, okay, Robin, so you missed it today. Let's make sure we have the protein at lunch and then cook a good dinner. And then tomorrow morning we try it again. Because see, what we forget, girls, is one of the, the fruits of the Spirit is gentleness. And yes, I am going to go to Galatians 5.22 for that. And we say here, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So the Holy Spirit is producing gentleness in us. So what does that mean to us? Does that mean that we're only gentle to those people around us? No, I really believe he wants us to also be gentle to ourselves. You see, because we're human, we're flawed. That's why I love the poster that I put up every now and then, that I'm flossom. I'm perfectly flawed because of the blood of Christ. And what I really want to get across today, and I've seen a couple of posts and I've heard some conversations that just really being hard on yourself because Maybe you're not where you want to be yet. Maybe your business isn't going the direction you wanted it to go. Maybe relationships aren't going the way you want them to go. Your children aren't. Your ministry's not. Whatever it is, maybe you too had a goal for a healthy body and a strong body. And maybe you're just not picking up the pieces and going. Be gentle on yourself. Because see, what we don't understand is the harder we are on ourselves, it reflects on to other people. So when you see someone out there that is typically snapping at you, maybe they're not gentle in their words, they're not kind in their words, it may not be anything personal to you. It could be that in their own life, they're not being gentle with themselves. That's where we fall short. See, because we think... We're supposed to be gentle and kind and compassionate and loving to everybody else but ourselves. 
We think that we don't need to take care of ourselves. We're too busy. And I want to encourage you that this year, let this be the year that you shift your mindset and you start seeing how important it is for you to take care of yourself. Because see, girls, the secret is if we don't take care of who we are, if we aren't healthy and strong and well, spiritually, mentally, and physically, we cannot serve anybody else. Because what happens is we keep serving them, and all of a sudden, all of that that we're not taking care of in ourselves starts to ooze out of the front. We see people that look like they're sucking on lemons all day. We see people that are just angry, that are depressed, that every word out of their mouth is negative. Oh, and girls, they're in the church. They're not just on social and out there in the world. If you don't start being more gentle with yourself and applying the scripture to your life, then you're not going to be gentle with the people around you. You may be right now, but what's going to happen is the more that you see yourself not achieving, failing, not being enough of whatever it is, that whole pod in you, that little core that you've got inside yourself, that you're beating yourself up every day because, in my case, you didn't eat the breakfast, you didn't have your protein, you didn't do this, you didn't get the laundry done, you didn't get the dishes done, you know, whatever you didn't get done, you harbor it inside and you dwell on it. And I know you do. We all do. We've got to learn to be gentle. God didn't call the perfect. God called the flawed. God didn't heal the well. He healed the sick. So we're no different, girls. We are flawed. We are flossom, perfectly flawed through the blood of Christ. In God's eyes, we are perfect to him. But our problem is, we look in the mirror and we judge ourselves differently than how God sees us. And that's because that's what the world has told us to do. We need to start turning back, girls, and going back to what the Bible tells us to do. Because if we do, we will thrive and live a stronger life, both body, mind, and spirit, than we ever have. Oh, Lordy, if I relied on what half these people in the world have said to me, wouldn't be a good thing. Now, does that mean that some of the things they've said is not true? No. But when, the, when they say these things, they're harsh, they're aggressive, they're mean, and their whole purpose is to derail you and sidetrack you. And see, the enemy uses that stuff. When you're a woman of God and you're moving forward and you're filled with the Spirit and you're in action for Him, these things will start coming at you. You know, it's like flying monkeys. You know, the, what is it? There's one of the, was it Wizard of Oz and the flying monkeys? That's what happens. But see, if we are taking care of ourselves and we're being gentle with ourselves, we're using the fruit of the Spirit like we just read in Galatians 5.22. One of the fruits of the Spirit is gentleness. And again, God isn't giving us that fruit just for everybody else. He wants you to be gentle and kind to yourself. Oh, oops, kindness is another fruit, right? So these fruits, well, let's look at this again. I decided to use my journal Bible today instead of the digital, right? I'm trying something new with y'all. Okay, so we got here are the fruits of our of the Spirit. Ready? Our love. Do you show love to yourself? Joy. We talked about that earlier. Joy is internal and not the external happiness. Peace. We are at total peace with whatever's happening eventually, sometimes. Because when there's some major things going on, we tend to and lean on that before we realize God's in control. Patience, we don't want to hear that, do we, girls? Kindness, that means kindness to others and to ourselves. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
And again, that's gentleness for yourself as well as the people around you. And self-control. So if you are a Christian and if you are a woman of God that is going to thrive, you must start being more gentle on yourself. You must stop being so harsh. That doesn't mean you don't set goals. That doesn't mean that <clears throat> I don't have... Oops, where did my page go? Got to find it in my book. That does not mean that I don't have goals. Okay? My goal here is still that I eat breakfast. Okay? My goal is exercise too. And I put down here and I crack up and everybody loved this. Learn to love exercise. Yes. It's not that I don't like it. I have an issue, and this is again where I'm not being gentle with myself, thinking that if I spend the time cooking my breakfast and my lunch, and if I spend the time working out, I'm wasting the time for my clients. Then I have to go back, and I have to say, okay, well, that might be true. However, if I do not eat right and exercise and be gentle to myself, what good am I going to be to anybody else? The other thing too, girls, when we talk about being gentle with yourself, part of it is if we're going to thrive as a woman of God, we have to act what we believe. We have to live it out, not just on church on Sundays. Okay, You've got to do it. All the time in your workplace in your home at school in your business so why are we not taking those fruits of the Spirit and applying it to our own life and the way we treat ourselves some of the things I've seen you girls say about yourself you would never say about another woman so why do you do it You know, and, and sometimes what I catch is some of you girls, and I'm guilty on this one, I'll say it jokingly about myself, but I don't mean it as a joke. I really mean whatever I said. And we need to stop that. Because if we're going to thrive in 2017, which I totally believe is a year that you guys are going to step out into whatever God has called you to do, into the power that he has given you, into the spirit that he has given you, and you're going to thrive. But if you can't start being gentle with yourself, and if all you're going to do is beat yourself up because you didn't accomplish something, you're going to be hesitant in thriving. Because you can't thrive if you're beating yourself up. You know, you got one hand over here going victory, and the other hand with a boxing glove punching yourself in the face. Stop it. The world out there, honey, is going to punch you enough. Don't do it to yourself. And I challenge you today to press into Jesus and ask him for help because it is something hard to do. I came through three people that I dated as a teenager that physically beat the crap out of me. One of them busted my ribs and put my hands through a windshield. Another one beat me till I was black and blue and then kept beating while I was down. And I lied to my girlfriend. I still remember that when I went to the gym and I had bruises all the way up from where he had been kicking. And she looked at me and she was a police officer with Garden Grove PD. And she says, what happened to you? And of course I had a sweatshirt on, kept it up as high as I could, right? Because I'm hiding it. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. And I told her I fell down some stairs. I lied to her because I was embarrassed that I allowed that to happen to me. The thing is, we need to be gentle because the world is being so harsh on us. And what I was blessed with as I came out of all of that, I, that's when I found Jesus. I was actually asked to go to Harvest Crusade with some friends that I worked with. I went, I went back the second night, went down, found Jesus, accepted him, and never looked back. And that's been 33 years now. And I'm going to tell you this much. That was the day that changed my life. 
Now did I all of a sudden recover and everything's great? No, you can ask my husband. For the first three years of our marriage, my husband said to me, where is my beautiful wife? And I'd look around and say, I don't know, where is she? About three years into our marriage, I realized that every time I made that comment, I watched his face. I was destroying the man that loved me unconditionally because I couldn't handle what had happened in my life. <clears throat> I was still hanging on to it. I hadn't forgiven it. It was a lot to try to release. At some point when I saw that, God just said to me, he says, you need to be gentle. You need to stop beating yourself up and you need to stop destroying that man. Okay, how do we do this, God? You know, because I get that I needed to, but how do I do it? All I knew in my head was this, and my husband never touched me. He treated me like a queen, and he still does. 16 years later, he still treats me like a queen, and I am his everything, and sometimes I don't understand that, but that's not my place to understand. But what I had to do, <clears throat> I took post-its, you know, just little post-its. I wrote notes on it, just positive notes, repeating what my husband said to me, and I put them in places that I would see only. So in my drawer in the bathroom, maybe in my wallet, maybe in my desk or at work when I was working in corporate America, because I had to look at that and start to condition my mind to believe what it said. I finally got to a point with him where when he'd say, where's my beautiful wife? I'd say, I'm right here. And yes, the smile was that fake. But you know what? After a period of time, I'm able to respond to him the way that he wants me to. But it's about being gentle on yourself. I was still beating myself up over things that happened before Christ. I was still being harsh on myself because that's all I knew. And for someone to genuinely care, I didn't know what to do with that. So I challenge you today, what is it you're beating yourself up over? What are you not being gentle on? It's time to change that. And if you have to take and put notes on post-its and put on places, then do it, girls. You've got to thrive by being gentle to yourself. You're gentle to everybody else. Time to apply it to you. So remember, fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. That isn't all of them. What is that? I'm reading it. See, this is why sometimes I go and read it here. Because sometimes the online Bible doesn't make sense. Um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yeah, they're not taking it all. I think I'm missing a verse. Yeah, because it's 22 and 23. Okay, sorry. I'm just... It only brought up 22 on the computer. So we need to put these fruits of the Spirit to play in our life, not just when we're ministering to others. So are you being harsh on yourself? Are you being less than gentle? Let's take it before God and let's ask Him to help you be gentle and kind to yourself so that you can reflect that gentleness, kindness, patience, joy, to the women that you're going to touch, to those people that you work with, to your children, to your spouse. Let's start being gentle. Be gentle with yourself. Stop beating yourself up. Stop being so hard on yourself. Are you ready to commit to that? And it's baby steps, girls. I know you can't just all of a sudden flip a switch and... And ooh, I'm gentle and kind now to myself. It's a process. But ask God today to help you start being gentle to yourself so that you can in turn be gentle to others. It just magnifies how you are with other people. Instead of giving other people 10% of your kindness and gentleness, 
once you can apply it to your life and be nicer to yourself, it's magnified when you're giving it out to somebody else. So I challenge you today. Are you being gentle and kind with yourself? Or are you judging yourself harder than even those around you might judge you? All right, so there you go. Kindness and gentleness to yourself is your focus for today. Ask God to help you, and he will help point you in a way to learn to heal. He'll show you how to heal, because many of you need to heal from things that have hurt you, people that have hurt you. Let the healing begin. Let God do what God does best. He's got you. He really does. And remember, you were born to thrive, not just survive. Don't forget also, take a look at our website for the church. If you're in South Carolina or even Southern North Carolina, we'd love to come have you come out and join the Thrive Conference live. It is March 18th. It goes from 10 to 4. We've got a fabulous guest speaker, Deborah Ross, will be joining me on stage. We've got worship. We're feeding you. We've got t-shirts. We've got books for you. It is just going to be a fabulous day. Um, but you can go to lakewoodfamily.com forward slash thrive-2017 or just on the front page lakewoodfamily.com and there's a slider there that'll have the Thrive Conference as well. So if you're out in our area, come join us. It's going to be an amazing day. We've got an amazing schedule for you and our topics are going to rock your world. It's time for you to thrive in 2017. So let's start taking action, but let's start today by being gentle and kind to yourself and starting to heal in those areas that you're wounded. All right? Love you, girls. I'll catch you tomorrow.